Hey there, Patreons, and welcome to the first part of a new tutorial series where we are going to be focusing on how I painted the Alpharius model for this year's Crystal Brush competition. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be demonstrating how to paint the armor on this wing. So we're kind of getting a little bit of a two-part lesson in this situation uh, where I'm going to be showing you the paints and methods that I use to paint the armor and I'm just gonna be applying them to a wing. Uh, hopefully this is a little bit of a lesson in uh, how techniques can cross from one thing to another. Um, what we're gonna be doing here is uh, starting off by, as you can see, uh, laying down a thin glaze of this phthalo green, which is a very cool green over this underpainting that we've done. And so I've just done a little quick sketch here, really blocking in the main, uh, the main where the main highlights and shadows are going to be going. And, uh, if you want to know more about how to do this, uh, you know, definitely hop back into the vault and into the into the Patreon page and check out our sketching videos. Uh, just kind of speeding things up here, just going through and doing a few more of these glazes. Uh, if you guys want to know more about that, check out Pyro Monkey Basics. There's a fantastic video on glazing. This is a tinting glaze. Uh, and so what I've done here is I have mixed a little bit of a cool yellow in with our phthalo green to create this really lovely green. And I'm starting to apply this as a highlight. Now, uh, hopefully you can see here, I'm kind of trying to push this highlight up towards, uh, up towards where we want the brightest highlights to be. Uh, and we're kind of pushing and lifting up in the place that we want the most paint to be deposited. And so we've just mixed a little bit more white and a little bit more yellow into this already green mix and we're just doing the same thing. We're just pushing this color back uh, up to where we want these highlights to be. And this is really gonna be the continuation of the process for a little while until we work it up to a nice highlight. And at that point, we're gonna glaze it over with just a pure yellow and it's gonna kind of help bring a little bit more brightness, a little bit more intensity to our highlights while still keeping the greens that are underneath it. Again, repeating the process, adding a little bit more white and a little bit more yellow. And uh, so this does keep the color a little bit more pastel. Uh, the benefit of doing this, is, of course, is that we get really nice coverage because of the white. Uh, and, you know, we can always glaze more intense colors over the, you know, the pastel or light tone colors. Uh, it gives us a much better saturation than just trying to go in with a with a pure yellow or even a yellow that's been mixed with white. Optically, it's always better to be looking through various layers, uh, you know, and having the light bounce back to you, uh, back again through all of those layers. It gives you a much richer color. And that's the main reason why we do the process in this manner instead of, uh, you know, just trying to work it up perfectly in layers. The glazing also has the benefit of helping us smooth everything down, which of course here we're not trying to work super, super, super smooth. We're just trying to make sure that our layers are somewhat consistent throughout. Kind of using a little bit of feathering right here, no pun intended. <laughs> And yet again, even brighter this time, we're just adding white. And so now here, uh, I have gone ahead and started to glaze in some phthalo blue. Uh, this is phthalo blue red shade, which is actually the cooler version, uh, surprisingly. It's cooler because it, it takes longer to get around the color wheel to yellow than phthalo blue green shade. Uh, and essentially what we're doing here is we're clarifying the area where our highlight was just to make sure that we're picking out all of these individual feathers. And also we're starting to add in uh, a bit of a shadow. Um, essentially this is just a very basic way of going from one end of the color wheel. So kind of from that yellow, uh, yellow green spectrum into the cool green spectrum. And then now we're shifting further around the color wheel into the cool blues. Uh, and so essentially this is so far just a very, very harmonious color palette, meaning that it's kind of all on the same side of the color palette 
We can still get quite a lot of luminosity though and quite a lot of depth just out of doing this. Something else to keep in mind uh, here that I'm doing uh, just a, kind of a little bit more of a intermediate, you know, theoretical idea is that the shadows that I'm using here are very, very transparent. Uh, Thalo blue is a, a super, super transparent color, meaning that the pigment itself is somewhat th see-through, like a piece of blue glass. Uh, and so when it's combined with medium, you know, you can really see through all of those layers and it just creates a very, very deep, very dark, rich blue tone for our shadows. Glazing in the thalo blue is great up to a certain point, but eventually it's nice just to come in with a very thick, uh, thick thalo blue and just really get that nice coverage that we are looking for. Um, blues are great because they have a, an incredibly high tinting strength uh, as compared to something like yellow. Uh, they can, for instance, if you uh, if you mix thalo blue or any blue to be honest with white, it'll just look blue and blue and blue. You know, uh, just as an example, like. With yellow, you know, after five parts of white mixed into yellow, it's really not going to look super yellow anymore. But out to like 20 parts of blue, it's still going to look very blue. Uh, and the same thing goes when you're mixing. Uh, and so it's, you, even though the color is transparent, we can get pretty decent coverage, especially over white. Uh, and it's just going to make things look very dark and rich. I'm also using a little bit more of a satin, satin gloss finish with the Thalo Blue using the Golden Fluid Acrylics. And essentially the reason is, is that if something has a little bit more of a satin to gloss finish, it just makes the color very, very, very rich. And it gives it much more of a depth than it would have if it was flat. And so uh, up in the highlights, my highlights are going to get a little bit more flat. Uh, I would say a flat satin kind of texture. And so we have the benefit of having the, the glossiness in the shadow and also in some of the midtones. And that gives us that really rich feeling. And then in the highlights there, they're more opaque uh, and they are also a bit more flat. And so we have a textural contrast as well as a transparency contrast, um, as well as, a, you know, a... Uh, a good value sh change, meaning the highlights and shadows are quite distinct and quite uh, separated from each other. Uh, and so we're kind of working in a bunch of different kinds of contrast here, and this just really makes everything quite uh, look quite satisfying to the eye. Uh, what I'm doing in here now, uh, like I was talking about before, is I'm coming in with this cool yellow tone, uh, and I am just glazing this over my highlights. And I'm, I'm trying not to go too super crazy, and if I get some on the blue, I'm not too worried. Like I said before, uh, the blue is has such a high tinting strength that it's really, you're barely going to be able to see any yellow that gets placed over it. Uh, and I'm, I can kind of wipe it away with my finger as well. As I place some on, if I place too much on, I can kind of scoop some of it back up with the same brush and then continue. Here I thinned that yellow down a little bit. It was a little bit too intense. And I'm coming back in for a second glaze, uh, trying to hit some of the mid-tones as well, just to, just to shift all of that up to the spectrum that I am looking for. After those glazes, it's looking quite lovely and it's looking very very nice i'm liking where the values are already at and so what i'm going to do here is i'm coming in with a little bit of black and a little bit of violet uh, mixed together essentially i've mixed my own nightshade purple and i am going to start to pick out the details as you guys know i'm a big big believer in really painting the the large shapes and volumes and then coming in and working the the minor details uh, and I'm going to speed this up a little bit because otherwise it'll take forever in a day. And, uh, you know, it's very, very important just because the eye really looks for those larger, more general shapes before it it, it starts looking for details. Uh, and I would highly suggest that you start to paint like this just because it's it's going to help your process with, you know, painting. And then it's, it's also going to get you thinking about the big things, you know, uh, which the human eye is a little bit more trained for. So I know I'm getting a little bit theoretical here and a little bit philosophic, but... Um, it, it really, I can't understate uh, how important that is. As you can see here too, I'm really trying to move the, the miniature to my hand and not the other way around. I'm not really moving my brush too much to get into any nooks and crannies. Um, also, I tend to pull my straight lines. Uh, it, it works very effectively for me. 
Uh, and you know, uh, what I would suggest if you're uncomfortable doing this or you, you aren't, you're a little out of practice perhaps, is just get a piece of paper or, you know, even on your thumbnail and you can just kind of draw a, uh, a little pattern of hatch marks. Uh, you know, just try to get straight lines painted as closely as possible to each other. And just that way you can practice pulling straight lines before you come into, you know, maybe working some of this detail work like we are right now. I'm just getting into these small little areas. Um, I know a lot of people would probably start to question like why, you know, wouldn't it be easier just to paint all the details uh, as you're going or trying to do do all of it after? Um, it's certainly possible, but it's much less efficient, um, in my opinion. Uh, and you'll see why here even more in just a second. So uh, instead of using more uh, more of the black color, I've kind of shifted up to an ultramarine. It's a little bit less uh, intense, and we just in some areas you're going to need really really dark in other areas you're not going to need it as dark and you're going to need it to be a little bit less intense so Um, here I'm coming in and starting to do some edge highlighting. I really, you know, uh, we've picked out the shadows and now I want to pick out some of the raised edge highlight surfaces. And, uh, you know, uh, edge highlighting is kind of a, supposed to be an easy way to do that. And it it is a very effective way to bring out specific details. This is a very, actually a very, very old technique. Old masters use this. Um, they would they call it scumbling. Uh, so I, you know, if it worked for them, it can work for us. We just need to make sure that we're not overusing it and just very much using the side of the brush to do that. And again, I have a, another Pirate Monkey Basics video for you if you want to check this out. I would highly suggest it if you are kind of having more or additional questions about this specific technique. And so on the armor uh, on Alpharius, as you could probably notice, um, I did little dots of white at the very end to make them look kind of jewel-like. I'm just repeating this here on the feathers. I think it does add a little bit of something extra uh, to it. It, it. And if you add enough of these small white dots, essentially the goal is to really kind of confuse the eye uh, and it makes it look very, very pleasing. So you don't have to do this though. You know, we could have left it just as it was before and it would have looked very, very lovely as well. But um, it does, I think it does look kind of nice. It makes these wings really, it gives them that last little pop of highlight. Yeah, I hope you guys have really, really enjoyed this tutorial as, you know, as we're getting kind of close to the end here. Um, next month, we are going to be coming out with a tutorial on how I painted his cloak uh, and it's a very effective way to, you know, paint cloth, uh, especially with the colors. We use very few colors. I think it's only four colors total to paint the cloth. I hope you guys enjoyed the first part of the series. It was a ton of fun to paint. Uh, I had a lot of requests from you guys on how I did, you know, some of the stuff that I did for my crystal brush pieces. And I thought I'd bring that to you in this more condensed version so that you can use these techniques uh, for yourself. There is the final little result. I hope you guys enjoy this and happy painting. Bye.